Attributing effects. That is going to be the topic of this episode of Chi Life. So this is something I think I think pretty much anyone who has done one of the Long White Cloud Qigong, one of the more comprehensive courses that we do, will have heard me talk about at least once, probably multiple times as we have different discussions within those courses. Because in those courses, people go quite deep into a variety of different Qigong practices. Each course focuses on some different aspects of Qigong and you know a whole lot of different practices that we work with. Um, but because we're working with them in, in an in-depth, quite intensive way, yeah, people go quite a bit deeper than maybe normally you would just attending some regular classes or something like that. And as a result of this, they often have some really interesting experiences. Experiences of becoming aware of their body, becoming aware of their energy, starting to understand things about themselves and their habits and their emotions and their responses and reactions to things. Um, and, and often some quite significant shifts and changes within them as part of that. And some of this can be, you know, somewhat subtle in terms of, you know, a slight different perspective on, on life and on different things occurring around them. Uh, and some of them can be much more tangible uh, things relate, you know, really simple things like flexibility and balance, you know, things like that. But, but also maybe health conditions that they've had issues with and um, some of these uh, being resolved or, or improving um, and things like that. Uh, and then, you know, something else that can sometimes happen is they're working quite intensively with some, in practice, some Qigong practices and sometimes some things that maybe aren't so pleasant, like maybe getting a headache or maybe feeling fatigued or maybe having, you know, something related to a health, a health issue that they've had in the past, maybe flaring up. This can happen as well. And within those courses... There is a lot of interaction, so we use a lot of pre-recorded material and written material to, you know, as, as a basis for people getting into the practices and learning about them. But we also have a lot of interaction, a lot of discussion. We have Q&A sessions every week. We have group practice sessions where we also talk about things and those. And we talk about the experiences that people have and, you know, people can ask about anything that's happening with them. And yeah, whenever people start to comment on, uh, you know, different, you know, good things, things, improvements in their health or uh, anything like that, and but also things like, you know, getting a headache, feeling fatigued, wh whatever it might be. One of the things I always try to reiterate is to just, just be careful about attributing the cause of something too quickly. Now, this doesn't mean that we can't attribute it at some point, but just not leaping to a conclusion too quickly about it. Because the nature of our lives are, and you know, generally when we're exploring Qigong practices, is we're not doing it in a strictly scientific, double-blind, controlled environment, right? Where we have a statistically significant uh, group of people, you know, one doing one thing and another group, you know, everything else remaining the same, but doing something else or not doing it, and so that we can compare exactly, you know, what the cause of something is. We're generally in a multivariate environment, which means we have lots of things going on all the time. So multi, many, variate, variables, right? So while we're maybe doing more qigong or specific practices that we weren't doing before, there can be lots of other stuff going on in our lives too. We might be eating different foods, we might be going out to social events, we might have different things happening at work or with our family and so on. And all, or things in the weather and the climate, you know, and all of these affect us as well. And it's, it's, it's really helpful and I, I think important to not jump too quickly to a conclusion about what's happening with us because if we think, okay, this is, you know, we've had whatever has happened, good or bad, because it applies, it applies both ways. It, it would be very easy, you know, to go like, okay, all those good things that have happened to you, that must be because of the Qigong practice that you're doing and anything unpleasant um, well, that couldn't possibly from, be from Qigong because there's no, you know, <laughs> we don't want you thinking that. You know, yeah, and I know some Qigong teachers who that's pretty much how they, you know, the way they talk. I don't think that's healthy at all. Um, 
if it's true on one hand, it can be true on the other. If something's having an effect, that effect can be either good or bad, right? Now, fortunately, almost all the time, you know, Qigong is very safe and it's going to lead to good results. But there are things that, you know, if you're practicing too intensively or you're doing something not quite the right way for you or things like that, that it can stir things up. It can, you know, it can lead to things like headaches and fatigue and flaring things up. Absolutely. And sometimes that's not a bad thing even. Sometimes that's actually just the process of when things are clearing through and things are rebalancing in your body that, uh, you know, some, some unpleasant stuff comes up to be processed and, and released. Sometimes, it, you know, it's not even a bad thing. But really important, I think, to attribute that correctly to what it is that may have caused it. Because in our multivariate experience in life, if you have, okay, something's happened, good or bad, and you think like, oh, well, I, I'm doing this, uh, you know, maybe it could be this, right? Good. Yeah, it's good to recognize it could be this. But what about this and this and this and all these other things that are going on? Because, you know, it, some of the things that crop up, it's like, well, what did you eat yesterday? Because <laughs> that can contribute to either feeling really good or not so good the next day. Did you sleep well last night? Hmm. Are you well hydrated? Like, have you, have you drunk enough fluids today? That has a big impact too. You know, have you had any, you know, an argument with someone at work or issues in a family relationship? This, these might be the main things affecting what's going on. Or it could well be that it's the Qigong, right? Now this doesn't just apply to Qigong, it applies to anything in life. To be able to take a step back and consider all the things that might be causing whatever it is that's happening. Because if we jump to a conclusion too quickly, well, it might be the wrong conclusion and then we're, we're missing what's actually causing things with us. And, and, and this, well, well one, it means like if it's something good and we're attributing it to the wrong thing, well, we're not going to get as positive good results as we would like. You know, we're missing out on opportunity there. But also if it's something bad or unpleasant, well, we're then not going to understand better how to avoid or change the thing that's really causing that. We, we want to be accurate in figuring out what, what's going on. And this is also, uh, incidentally, this is often how superstitions form. If you think about it, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of you probably know someone who, you know, whether they play in a sports team or they just have a favorite sports team, and uh, at one point when they won a certain game, they were wearing a certain pair of socks, and now whenever the team plays, they have to wear those socks because, you know, that helps them to win. Now, of course, the socks they wear have likely almost nothing to do with how well the team performs but they've associated it with it and, and look honestly a lot of people just do this in good fun these days but people can actually start to believe this stuff and be quite superstitious about this and and that applies to some qigong practices as well and the way people think about them and think oh I'll do this and this and I have to do it this way and, and, and they don't really then understand what well, what is it that's really happening because they've attributed things incorrectly you know, it's, it's good to be able to dig down and understand what's really happening rather than just, yeah, false, false assumptions. So yeah, being able to take a step back, look broadly, you can then consider all the different things that might be going on and identify, hey, maybe it's this, maybe it's this, maybe it's this, maybe it's this. Mm, sometimes straight away you'll have a clear, a clear feeling like, nah, I'm pretty sure it's this. And, you know, often that's fine. You're like, okay, cool. You've at least considered in case there's something else. Other times you're like, oh, actually I'm not sure. And you then might want to experiment and go like, well, maybe it was what I ate. Maybe it was this other thing, you know, and, and consider and experiment with those things to find out. And then having experimented, then you go, oh, okay, I'm pretty sure it wasn't this. I'm pretty sure it wasn't this. <sighs> it is this thing over here. At that point, it can be quite healthy to go, yeah, I'm pretty sure whatever it is that's happening came from, and again, it could be that it came from what you ate or something like that. Or yeah, I'm pretty sure this change has come from my Qigong practice, right? So not being too quick to attribute doesn't mean that we don't attribute at some point, that we don't go like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it came from that. It just means that we make sure that we have a wide view and we don't neglect to identify other things that might be causing whatever we're experiencing, good or bad. Anyway, um, like I said, this, this comes up generally at least a few times uh, within uh, the courses that we teach at Long White Cloud Qigong to help people to have a, you know, a, a really well-grounded, practical point of view on what they're doing and, and what comes out of it. 
but then as part of it, yeah, a, a lot of really interesting stuff and beneficial stuff comes from the Qigong practices, of course. But I always want to make sure that people are, you know, you know, attributing things to the to the right source, and and aware of all the things and the effect they're having in their life. And so I thought I'd share that with you as well. Uh, might be helpful for you in your qigong practice, or maybe in other things in your life as well. All right, I look forward to seeing you on another vlog soon.